and in the aircraft is equipped with a ground proximity warning system, GPWS, and enhanced ground proximity warning system, or EGPWS. These systems provide alerts for potentially hazardous flight conditions involving imminent impact with the ground. We'll first describe the GPWS. The GPWS detects unacceptable descent rates and closure with terrain. It operates based upon radio altitude, barometric altitude, and glide slope information. Accordingly, the GPWS processes the data from radio altitude 1, ATERIS 1, ILS 1, FMGC 1, and LGCIU 1. GPWS alerts are active when the aircraft is operating at RA altitudes, that is between 10 feet AGL and 2450 feet AGL. Note, GPWS alerts do not provide an alert for flight toward vertically sheer terrain or for low rate of descent into terrain while in the landing configuration. The GPWS control panel is located on the left side of the overhead panel. The GPWS panel allows the crew to inhibit some GPWS warnings. The system push button controls the basic functions. The system can be tested by pressing either GPWS glide slope push button switch, but this is considered a maintenance test. The GPWS visual warnings are displayed as shown, and all alerts are delivered through the cockpit speakers. Note, the speaker volume setting does not affect the volume of GPWS alerts. Speaker volume settings only control the volume for radio communications. The GPWS operates with five modes. Activation of alerts for modes 1 through 4 will cause the GPWS lights to come on, while activation of a mode 5 alert will cause the glide slope lights to come on. We'll provide a description of each mode in the following frames. Mode 1 provides alert for excessive rate of descent. It has two boundaries. Penetration of the first boundary illuminates the GPWS light and a repeated aural alert of sync rate. Penetration of the second boundary generates a repetitive pull up. Make note of the radio altitudes and sync rates that activate these alerts. Mode 2 provides alert for excessive terrain closure rate. There is a Mode 2A and a Mode 2B. A Mode 2A alert activates if the terrain closure rate occurs while the flaps are not in a landing configuration and the aircraft is not on the glide slope beam. With the flaps in the landing position, the system switches to Mode 2B. Activation of a Mode 2A alert illuminates the GPWS light and the repeated aural alert, Terrain. After the alert, Terrain, sounds twice, the alert, Pull Up, is repeated until the aircraft leaves the warning envelope. The pop-up text provides more details on Mode 2A alerts. The Mode 2B alerts are the same as Mode 2A. However, when the gear and flaps are in a landing configuration, the aural alert is terrain only and is not followed by pull up if the aircraft remains in the envelope. The lower boundary for mode 2B varies depending on altitude rate, except on ILS approach, the lower boundary is fixed at 30 feet. The pop-up text provides more details on mode 2B alerts Mode 3 provides alert for altitude loss after takeoff. If the aircraft descends during takeoff or go around, 
the GPWS lights come on, and the aural alert, don't sink, sounds repeatedly. Note the required altitude loss at various radio altitudes that will activate this alert. The pop-up text provides more details on Mode 3 alerts. Mode 4 provides alert for unsafe terrain clearance. There is a Mode 4A, 4B, and 4C. Mode 4A provides unsafe terrain clearance alerts for landing gear up and flaps not in landing configuration. The aural warnings are either too low gear or too low terrain, depending on the airspeed and radio altitude. Mode 4B provides unsafe terrain clearance alerts for landing gear up or flaps not in landing configuration. The aural warnings are either too low gear, too low flaps, or too low terrain, depending on the configuration, airspeed, and radio altitude. Mode 4C provides unsafe terrain clearance alerts for landing gear up or flaps not in landing configuration and it's primarily designed to provide alerts during takeoff and climb. There are two upper boundaries for Mode 4C, as shown on the diagram. If the aircraft descends after takeoff and penetrates the Mode C boundary, the GPWS lights come on and the aural alert, too low terrain, sounds repeatedly. Mode 5 provides descent below glide slope alert. This diagram shows a soft and hard warning area boundary for dots below glide slope at various radio altitudes. In both areas, the glide slope lights come on and the aural alert glide slope is repeated. In the hard warning area, the loudness of the aural alert is increased. A Mode 5 alert can be canceled by pressing the GPWS push button, but the mode will reactivate when a new envelope is entered. The glide slope mode can be inhibited by selecting the glide slope mode push button to off. In this situation, all other GPWS modes continue to operate, but no alert will be given for below glide slope conditions. Company policy is very specific as to when this mode may be turned off. Some GPWS mode boundaries can be inhibited for abnormal landing configurations. The normal flap setting for landing is flap full. However, the crew may land with flap 3 in response to an ECAM procedure or performance requirement. In this case, the landing flap 3 push button switch is selected on to inhibit GPWS alerts that are associated with not using the normal flap full position. Note the green GPWS flap 3 memo message is displayed on the EWD. In other abnormal situations, the flaps may be set to less than flap 3 for landing. In this case, the flap mode push button switch is selected to off to inhibit GPWS warnings associated with landing flaps. Note the green flap mode off message is displayed on the EWD. Recall that standard GPWS features are independent from the EGPWS. This completes our description of the standard GPWS. Next, we'll describe the look-ahead features of the eGPWS. Look-ahead terrain alerting is provided as a function of the Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System, or eGPWS, and is computed by comparing the terrain database with the FNGC current position. The eGPWS functions as a predictive system and helps to avoid controlled flight into terrain. The eGPWS provides more descriptive aural and visual alerts than the standard GPWS and can issue alerts for flight toward a vertical cliff. The eGPWS provides terrain awareness alerting and terrain clearance floor alerting. Terrain awareness is always available 
while terrain clearance floor alerting is operational only when in close proximity to an airport. We'll first describe terrain awareness alerting. EGPWS visual alerts are provided by a Terrain Awareness Display, TAD, that paints density dot patterns of green, amber, or red on the ND in all modes except plan. Each color and the dot density identifies the threat level of the terrain. The criteria for the color and dot density is shown on this frame. It is not necessary for you to memorize these values, only to understand the importance of the colors and density. The TAD does not display in the plan mode. If the plan mode is active when a TAD alert occurs, the message Terrain change mode appears on the plan display in red or amber to match the level of the TAD alert. The Terrain On ND push button switches are installed as shown. Pushing the Terrain On ND button will display the terrain images on the associated ND. This display will replace any previous selection of weather radar display. The terrain image sweeps from the center out and the cyan annunciation of terrain displays instead of tilt. If it is necessary to monitor the weather radar and terrain images at the same time, one pilot can monitor the weather while the other pilot monitors the terrain. When weather is displayed, it will be replaced by a pop-up terrain display if a terrain conflict should occur. Aural and pop-up visual alerts warnings are available regardless of the position of the terrain on in the switch. The off position of the terrain push button allows the crew to inhibit the enhanced functions but maintains the basic GPWS functions operative. If there is a failure of EGPWS functions, the fault light comes on but the basic GPWS modes continue to operate. Terrain awareness alerts are provided as both cautions and warnings. The red GPWS lights will come on with either a terrain caution or a terrain warning. Look ahead caution alerts are provided when the airplane is approximately 40 to 60 seconds prior to an estimated terrain impact. When the caution alert occurs, the threat area displays as a solid amber. An amber terrain ahead message is displayed and the aural alert of terrain ahead is repeated until clear of the caution envelope. Note, the display appears even if the terrain on ND switch is off and in this situation the on light in the switch comes on automatically. Look ahead warning alerts are provided when the airplane is approximately 20 to 30 seconds prior to an estimated terrain impact. When the warning alert occurs, the threat area displays as a solid red. A red terrain ahead message is displayed and the aural alert of terrain ahead pull up is repeated until clear of the warning envelope. Similar to the caution alert, the warning displays appears even if the terrain on ND switch is off. And in this situation, 
the on light in the switch comes on automatically. Whether a terrain caution or terrain warning occurs, the flight crew must immediately respond to the alert without attempting to determine whether or not the alert is valid. That completes the description of terrain awareness alert. Now let's discuss the terrain clearance floor alerting that provides enhanced alerting for areas on approach to a runway. Terrain clearance floor. Terrain clearance floor alerts are installed to prevent landing short of the runway. The EGPWS creates a computerized floor on approach to these runways for which the aircraft should not fly below during the descent for landing. The floor starts backwards from the approach end of the runway and extends up at 1 degree per mile until it is 400 feet above the local terrain at 5 miles from the end of the runway. The floor remains at 400 feet above the local terrain until a distance of 12 nautical miles from the runway, where it rises again at 1 degree until it is at 700 feet above the local terrain at 15 nautical miles from the end of the runway. If the aircraft penetrates the floor, the GPWS light illuminates and the aural alert too low terrain, too low terrain sounds. The system does not access the FMC route and cannot differentiate between destination airports and other nearby airports. Let's finish with a review of some operational issues for the terrain awareness and terrain clearance floor alerts. First, Pilots are authorized to deviate from their current ATC clearance to the extent necessary to comply with an enhanced GPWS alert. Inform ATC as soon as possible of the situation. Never navigate by the use of the terrain display. The terrain display is intended to serve as a situational awareness tool only and may not provide the accuracy, fidelity on which to solely base terrain avoidance maneuvering decisions. Therefore, the terrain display must not be used for navigation or escape guidance in response to terrain warnings. If there is no terrain data in the database for a particular area, terrain alerting is not available for that area. These areas are highlighted on the display using medium dot density magenta. The terrain awareness and terrain clearance floor functions operate using the FMS1 position. Therefore, the system does not protect against an FMS1 position error. Finally, the terrain alerts are inhibited by a wind shear warning when the aircraft is in a wind shear condition. Now let's answer some questions. 